Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be taking a look at 2018 question 3. So we went over part A in a previous video, but um, I, I think it would be nice to go over parts B and C for this question as well. Okay, so um, if you don't remember the algorithms of part A, feel free to just watch that previous video. But just to quickly recap, um, serial numbers defined to be the following. And in part A, what we did is we generated a graph from a starting serial number. And the reason why I call it a graph is because this is essentially um, a graph data structure here, right? Because we have a collection of nodes, which are all of these numbers, and edges, which are the connections between these numbers. So we generated the graph in part A, and what we were interested in part A is the maximum distance between two, two, um, two nodes. And the way we did that is um, I showed a couple of different approaches, but then the one which we settled on was the floyd warshall algorithm for this. And um, this provides us a really clean way to generate the largest distance between any two nodes. And bear in mind, distance is essentially just the number of nodes you have to hop between to get to another node. For example, um, the distance here would be 6, because these are 6 hops involved, basically. So um, that's essentially what we did in part A. Now, uh, let's go to part B. Essentially, for part B, what we're interested in is not the distance um, from 3, 6, um, 3, 2, 6, 4, 5, 1, but we're interested in the distance from any two numbers equivalent to 3, 2, 6, 4, 5, 1. So, uh, essentially, we can reuse the same code which we did in part A, because in part A, it gives us the maximum distance starting at a specific number. So, instead of starting at a specific number, if we essentially, um, the, the pseudocode for this would be, for every single node, which is according to 3, 2, 6, 4, 5, 1. Maybe if I have to just call these nodes um, A, B, C. I, okay, I won't draw the circle just for clarity. But um, if, if we just have some sort of graph structure, bear in mind um, all of these letters essentially would represent some sort of number or the other. Um, and what, what we are interested in is we're interested in the largest distance between any two serial numbers. So, um, essentially, if we call the function, um, in, if, if we let the code in part A essentially be f of some number. So, in this case, f of 4, four 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 gives us 6. Essentially, if we call this function f, if we call that for A, then if we call that for B, call that for C, and then we, we repeat that, we call that for every single number, which is equivalent to A. If we essentially just call this number for all of these um, all of these numbers, and all we have to do is take the maximum of all of these um, function outputs, and that will give us our answer. And now, um, th this doesn't seem like the most efficient way to do it. However, uh, there is a way to um, op optimize this process significantly, because we use the floyd warshall algorithm. Inside the floyd warshall algorithm, it turns out that um, in the process of generating f of a, We've already done all the work to generate f of b, f of c, f of g, all of these. So all of these um, are essentially, it's just o one time to generate all of these, um, all of these other ones um, after generating um, f of a. So, um, it, okay, it's, it's not really o one, but it, it, like, it, it, it's, it, it doesn't take much time at all. And um, I'll just quickly show the code for this, this question. Okay. So, um, neighbors, this neighbors function is exactly the same as it was in part A. A lot of it, it's very similar. This is all the same. Um, and the Floyd Warshall, it's very, very similar, but we'll just make two small changes. The first change is the way you entry generate the answer, and the second is this. Okay, first we'll go over this. Essentially, what we have here is inside our um, Floyd Warshall the first time, um, we only had to execute this code once. The reason for that is because the starting element was the first index, hence um, it, it suffices just to um, it, it, just to check each of each just iterate over each of these things once. However, the reason why that doesn't work here is because now we're interested in the shortest path between any pair of nodes, not just from the first node. So it turns out that if we just do it from the first node, then we're essentially only checking in one direction. But then um, because we're, we're doing it twice now, we're checking both directions. If that makes sense. Um, if that doesn't really make sense, then m m maybe um, uh, watch a video on the Floyd Warshall algorithm, um, because that's not really the focus of this particular question. But um, that's essentially why we have it twice instead of once. 
And then the other change which we make, um, it's relatively straightforward. Essentially what we do is we initialize some answer variable to being negative infinity. And then we iterate over each node and we update answer to be the maximum of whatever its current um, value is and whatever the uh, maximum distance is between any two nodes. So, and this basically ensures that we get the maximum possible distance. And um, after we do this for every single node, we just return answer, which will be our final answer. So if we were to just run this code for um, the input which they provided, we get 16, which is correct. And the other input which, um, which they gave was 326451. Let's just run it on that one as well. So 326451. If we were to run this code, we would get 7. That's also correct. Okay, so that's that's basically um, that, 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 that's part A finished. Now let's go over part B. So for part B, um, sorry, that, that's part B finished. Let's go over part C. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, now I'll just recall the face the question. Now, part C is a little more complicated, but um, it's, if you understood part A, you should, um, like, the, the part C is doable. It's still hard, but it's, it's doable. Essentially, um, what we have is we're interested in the largest set of serial numbers, none of which are equivalent, each consisting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So maybe if we define some function f of k, or if we call it g of k, because we defined a function f of k earlier. So g of k essentially um, gives us the size of the set of largest serial numbers. So the size of the set um, of numbers, which consists of the digits 1 to k, consisting, sorry, my handwriting is a bit awful, but you'll have to bear with it, um, consisting of the digits 1 to till k. And now, um, th the reason why I define this function is because we're essentially interested in the value of g of 5 and g of 9. Okay. So, um, 5 and 9 are both very big numbers, which, um, okay, they're, they're not really big numbers, but um, c consisting, uh, considering how many permutations of digits are possible for each of these numbers, they are too big to be done by hand. So then, that implies that we must have a program. But then, before that, um, it, it's very useful to try this out for smaller numbers. Let's say g of 3. If we can work out what g of 3 is, then maybe we can get some idea, and then um, use that to work out g of 5 and g of 9. So, essentially for g of 3, um, we have a few groups. And the, the way I define a group to be is a group is, essentially, we have a certain number, 1, 2, 3. A serial number, 1, 2, 3. All serial numbers which are equivalent to this number, we define them to be inside a group. So, um, I'll just quickly write down all the groups for um, f of 3. So, these four are basically the groups which we have for 3. And what, what this means is, um, this means that from the serial number 1, 2, 3, we cannot get to any other serial number, um, any other serial number of length 3. And the reason why is because it's inside its own group. Remember, we define a group to be the set of numbers such that all of those numbers are equivalent to each other. And now, um, we know that for 3, 1, 2 and 1, 3, 2, because they're in the same group, we can, um, we, we can basically go between these numbers. And the reason why um, having groups is really helpful is because, um, essentially, if we go back to the question, we're interested in the largest set of serial numbers such that none of, none of which are equivalent, each consisting of the digits 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that basically means that um, if we choose one number from each group, then, then that's the maximum number which we can choose. That means for g of 3, the answer is 4. And now, the reason why we can't choose any more numbers is, um, the, like, okay, let, let, let's say that g of k is n. Now, um, w what my proposition is, is that the answer um, to our question is equal to n. And now, the reason to this is because, um, suppose that the answer was greater than n, answer was greater than n, then this would basically mean that we would have um, this means that we have at least n plus 1 numbers.
And then we also have n groups for these n plus 1 numbers. And now, um, the, the, there is basically a principle in maths, which is called the pigeonhole principle. Um, but then it, 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 it really makes sense when you think about it, because if we have n plus 1 numbers and we have n groups, then there must be one group with two numbers. So I'll just write that, that there must be at least one group with two numbers. And now, this is basically, um, which is not allowed, because in our restriction, we're not allowed to have any two equivalent serial numbers, which isn't allowed. So this is basically like a mini proof by contradiction, um, but th this essentially shows um, why the answer is indeed n. Um, so th 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 this is basically why th this claim is indeed correct. So now, the um, problem just becomes, we need to work out what g of, um, g of 5 is, g of 9 is etc. For that, we need to work out what each of these groups are. And now, um, let's basically just jump to the code, where I will show you how to form these groups. Okay. So, um, yeah, you, you, you can just see that. Um, I used some code to generate um, these groups for three. Okay, and now, one thing which I'll do, um, it, just as the program is running in the background, as I explain it, I'll just run it for, um, for nine because it takes around 20-30 seconds, um, which is okay, because this, is, um, this isn't part A of question, so we're allowed to take as much time as we want. So we'll just quickly run it. Okay, now the first thing which we do is we generate permutations um, of length k. And, 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 and now, um, this looks quite complicated, um, it's just um, written in a very compact form, but then essentially what it does is it uses um, a library, and it generates all the possible permutations of the digits 1, 2, 3 till k. Now, this isn't really the focus of this question, um, so I, I won't go through it, um, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments. Okay. Now, um, for neighbours, essentially, neighbours is the same as what it was in part A, so I won't go through that one either. And now we have create group. So, this code is all the same as it was in part A, but we have one addition, which is visited. Because, essentially, um, if, if, if inside our graph data structure, if we just go over all the elements which um, are equivalent to a certain serial number, then all of those elements must be part of the group, and only those elements must be part of the group. Thus, if we essentially just, for every element, if it's not inside visited, if we add it to the visited array, set, sorry, and then finally we just need to return visited, this basically gives us a group for a certain number. And now our problem becomes, um, and now our problem becomes much easier. Because what we need to do is we just need to iterate over every single number. Remember, numbers are all the possible permutations. We need to iterate over every single number, and we need to um, form the group of that number. And now, um, the only case where we form the group of the number is as long as the number has not already been visited. Now, if the number is not being visited, then we need to update visited with that group. And then finally, we need to um, update groups um, to containing this group as well. And then we repeat this for every single number, and this gives us all the possible groups for length k. And after we print the length of groups, that's effectively our answer, which is 2620 for 9. And if we um, just run it for 5 as well, we should get 26. Okay. And both of these are indeed correct. So that's basically the solution to um, part C for this question. Okay. That's basically it for this particular video. I really hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, um, please be sure to subscribe and leave a like. It would be very much appreciated. And um, yeah, thanks, thanks for watching. I'll see you in another video next time. Bye.